Hello, Zach. How are you? Justin, I am doing damn well excited for our video. What's going on? I have a riddle for you. <laughs> a riddle? Okay. <laughs> What's too expensive to buy, but you can get paid to buy it? Probably not a tractor ta trailer. Those are... Those are um, no. Um, too expensive to buy, probably get paid. <sighs> like a, a Portuguese water dog. An electric vehicle <laughs> pack, but close. <laughs> close fortunately generous federal state and even local incentives can make going electric a much better deal for your wallet let's talk about incentives zach because i don't know about you but evs are expensive if we're looking at sixty thousand dollar vehicles who can afford that kind of money right did you see the latest data from cox automotive and kbb the average ev new ev transaction price in april was 65 over sixty-five thousand dollars. so good job on the riddle because yeah i need some incentives if i'm going to spend that type of money well i'm feeling lucky with my hyundai ionic 5 so thank you for that zach so in 2022 the federal ev tax incentive offers up to 7500 if you owe that much on your annual tax liability now, here's the tricky thing about the federal EV tax incentive. Not everyone can take advantage of the full thing, because if you only owe $4,000 in your federal taxes each year, you only can claim $4,000 in the federal EV tax credit. So it seems to me like it's kind of an incentive built for the wealthy. Is that how you see it, Zach? I mean, yeah, no, it's not, it's not like a, it's a black or white thing. I mean, it's like, yes, that's exactly what it is, which is why... I mean, it's, obviously it didn't pass and it doesn't seem like anything's going to come back similar like it, but the Build Back Better bill had some pretty progressive EV incentives in it. Not only were they just more, up to 12500 but it wasn't a tax refund. It was literally the government stroking a check to you, fundamentally very different than what we currently have in place, the $7,500 EV tax incentive. Not to mention, Justin, some automakers have already run out of that. So it's like only accessible to the wealthy which EVs kind of sort of are in a, in a sense as well. But it's also run out for some of the more like brand names in the space as well. Yeah, so 75%, three out of every four new electric vehicles sold in the United States this year has been a Tesla. Tesla does not even qualify. So one, already we're looking at a small percentage of 2022's EV models qualifying for the federal EV tax credit. And before you get too excited out there, you, they're not going to write you a check. Okay, so this is not refundable. Yeah. You, if you're lucky, you can get up to 7,500 in federal EV tax credits. Now, let's talk about the other automaker that has already reached their 200,000 sale cap for this tax credit. It is, drum roll please, General Motors. Did you think General Motors had sold that many EVs? It's honestly kind of mind boggling, but also some hybrid powertrains also qualify for the, uh, for the tax credit, the, the existing tax credits, correct? So plug-in hybrids do qualify. They, they qualify for about $4,000 in federal EV tax credit. But the reason that General Motors has already exceeded its 200,000 sale cap is actually the popularity of the Chevy Bolt fire extinguisher and all <laughs> which also the chevy bolt has now come back into production for i guess the 2022 model year um so like they are selling them again but you're right you can't get the incentive against it toyota is running up close to uh to, to the 200,000 vehicle cap as well if i'm not mistaken yeah so the three automakers who are getting really close to the cap toyota nissan and ford of those three it looks like toyota is going to hit the cap later in 2022 but it's not like the federal EV tax incentive just falls off a cliff right when you hit the 200,000 sale limit. You enter a one year phase out period. So Toyota buyers, those who are for some reason interested in the brand new BZ4X, poor charging capability and all, they'll have all of 2023 to decide whether or not they want to take advantage of that federal EV tax credit. Nissan. The Aria is not close to coming out. We're still several months away from that. So Nissan, probably 2023, and Ford as well with the ramp up of the F-150 Lightning electric truck. It looks like Ford will hit that cap in 2023. Kind of makes you think that 2023 is when we will see more EV tax incentives, or excuse me, revised EV tax incentives or tax rebates, because every major automaker at that point will run out of them. And you've got to think that all this investment is being put towards EVs. We're going to need to see some major impact in terms of uh, like helping to make it more cost effective for folks to be able to, to get, in, uh, get into an EV. And what's fascinating to me is that if you're a high income earner, I'm talking over 
$250,000 per year on an individual basis or filers, married filers, $500,000 or more, you should actually buy an EV ASAP because all of the proposals for revising the federal EV tax credit, they implement an income cap where you will not be eligible for any of the incentive. But today, with the bill that was originally signed in 2008, anybody can qualify no matter their income. Want to know who the good dealer is in your neighborhood? Go to joinya.com and check out our crowdsourced dealer reviews. All of our community members coming together to help one another. Let's talk a little bit about state incentives. Like maybe we don't need to get into the weeds of every single state, but what's like the best state to be buying an EV in, or maybe like a sleeper state, like one that you may not have thought of that's really a, a good one to be looking at as well. So state incentives come in the form of rebates, both point of sale rebates and post sale rebates, state tax credit incentives, and also sales tax exemptions, which if you think about it and how expensive EVs are, sales tax exemption could be a huge deal, right? But not all states offer EV incentives. Where I live in the beautiful mountain state of West Virginia, we've got no incentives. But there are some states, especially along the coasts, and a few surprising ones throughout the rest of the country, where buying an EV is way, way more affordable because of state-level incentives. So, number one, Connecticut. In Connecticut, you can get $4,250 in rebates for purchasing an electric vehicle. And I don't know about you, Zach, but if you're interested in buying a, a hydrogen fuel cell vehicle, a rebate is not my number one worry. My number one worry would be where am I going to get the dang hydrogen at, right? <laughs> of course, yes. In, in Connecticut, believe it or not, you can get $9,000 in rebates for a hydrogen fuel cell vehicle. That's amazing. $9,000. Let's talk about New Jersey. New Jersey had the best incentives in the nation for EVs up until recently because they've exhausted funding for their very generous $5,000 rebate for electric vehicle purchases. Yep. But there's still an incentive in place that is worth a ton of money. It's the sales tax exemption. So New Jersey has a sales tax rate, rate of about 6.5%. Think about this. If you're buying a Lucid Air for like $130,000, lucky you. Yes. You're saving like $9,000 from sales tax. That's a big deal. You also are able to afford a lucid air. But anyway, that's a whole other story. What's another state on your list that's one to be aware of where you have really strong incentives? This one might be surprising. It's Colorado. Yeah, I was waiting for Colorado. So in 2022, you can get 2500 in state rebates in Colorado. It's going to step down to $2,000 in 2023 before disappearing entirely. Unless, of course, some new funding just drops out of the sky. <laughs> a possibility. What else? Massachusetts and Oregon both qualify for a $2,500 state rebate. Delaware, $2,500 as long as the vehicle costs under 60000 So no Model Y for you. New York and California. Both $2,000. However, in California, there's a price cap of $45,000 for a car and $60,000 for an SUV. So the only Tesla that would qualify for the California state rebate would be the base level Model 3. Pretty interesting how things have changed as prices have skyrocketed. And honestly, we've heard of even new proposed tax legislation in different states. Like Illinois has one that's proposed right now. Every single week, I'll go on a limp week, we're probably hearing about rumblings of new bills or bills that are being proposed to state legislatures. So this is the topic. I know you maintain an article back on the joinyaa.com website about all the tax incentives. It's a link down below in the description as well. But this is an important topic to be staying on top of because there's just so much fluidity. Like things are changing pretty frequently on a state by state level. And we would anticipate eventually there'll be something there from the federal level too. Yeah. And another very amazing aspect is just how much incentives affect the break even time if you're going for an EV. When you compare the out the door cost of an electric vehicle to that of an ICE counterpart, well, combustion engine vehicles are just more affordable in 2022. And even when you factor in the affordability of electricity over going to the gas station, without incentives, in most cases, you're still going to need five to 10 years to break even because of that vast difference in cost. But when you factor in incentives, you can be looking at a payback time, a break even time 
of just two to five years buying an EV over an ICE counterpart. Sounds like we got a few more videos in our future, Justin. Thanks for running us through the incentives. Again, check the link down below. Lots of good information there. We'll keep it up to date. And yeah, yeah, we're going to have to do a break-even video, ICE versus EV. But anyway, we'll save that for another episode. Thank you, Zach.